So instead of looking at the average rate of a reaction, you can also look at what, how the rate is changing um, at any given point. So that's the instantaneous rate. So, rate. so this is just like when you're driving, if you just look at your speedometer, you can figure out how fast you're going at any given point. And the way you find that is if you were to graph this concentration versus time, you make this graph here, the tangent line at any one of these points is the instantaneous rate. So if you're like, I don't remember how to do that, don't worry, we're not, gonna, we're not going to do it. I'm not going to give you a graph and make you find the, the tangent of, of uh, at any one of these points. Um, but that's how you could find it. It's the instantaneous rate. And the best indicator of how um, the, the rate of the reaction is the instantaneous rate near the beginning of the reaction because all the reactions are going to slow down over time. As you start using up those concentrations, the reaction rate is going to slow. Um, so the average rate is going to decrease over, over time because the react, reacting concentration is going to decrease. Um, so if you know, so in this reaction, right, we were looking at the same one that we that we were looking at in the last example. For every one mole of this reactant, we make one mole of this product. The ratio, the stoichiometric ratio is one to one. So the rate of disappearance of this reactant is equal to the rate of appearance of the product. That's not always going to be true. If you have a different stoichiometric ratio, um, what, your reactant could decrease at a different rate that your uh, product is increasing. So you need to look at the stoichiometry of the reaction. So let's look at this reaction here. So we have two HI, and then we get so basically two moles of this are going to decompose, and you're going to make one mole of this and one mole of that. So this thing is going to, uh, the, the rate at which the reactant is decreasing is going to be faster, twice as fast as the rate of appearance of the products. And so the way you can figure this out, you can set up this little, um, generalized you know for general reactions this is how you find the rate and what we're doing is just comparing the rate of change of the reactants and the products and different reactants different products so it's one over the stoichiometric coefficient change in concentration over change of time one over stoichiometric coefficient change of concentration change in time you can even do this for um, the other reactant as well so if you wanted to see what this would be for like h2 um, whoops. So you have the change in change in H two over the H two concentration over the change in time. So eight I and I two and H two are changing at the same rate. For every one mole of of H, you make one mole of I. Um, but two moles of these have to decrease. And so this is where that stoichiometric coefficient comes in, one over the coefficient. The negative is because this guy's a reactant. The, pos the other ones are positive. Remember, rates are always positive. Um, reactant concentrations are going to decrease over time. So this change in HI is negative. So you want to put a negative in front of it to make it positive. If this was your generalized reaction, where the lowercase letters represent the stoichiometric coefficients, you have one over A, DA, DT, one over B, DB, DT. Um, these guys are negative because you have a uh, reactant. The other ones are positive because you have a product. So let's see if we can set that up for, you know, keep this in mind and try to set it up for this reaction here. So we have two reactants. We have A and we have B. Um, and then we have C as our product. And then what they're doing in this one is they're telling you how A is changing over time and they want to know how C is changing over time. So this is useful if you're doing a reaction and uh, it's really easy to measure maybe the reactant but the concentration over time, but it's harder to measure how the product is changing. Um, as long as you know the stoichiometry of the reaction, you can figure out how everybody's changing. You only have to do it once and then you can use the stoichiometry to figure out how everyone's changing. So the first thing you want to do is kind of set up this generalized um, reaction here. So I have A, so I have 1 over 3, um, and then I'm going to say negative dA dt, right, concentrations there. And I'm putting that negative in there just to remind you that that's all part of, you know, one thing. Negative change in A over change in time is 5. So this quantity is going to be 5 here when we after we set this up. For B, over here I kind of had it outside. It, it, it doesn't really matter if you put it outside or kind of inside here. Um, negative change in B over the change in time, and then that equals 1 over 4 change in C over the change in time. I don't know where all these extra lines are coming from here. Okay, so in this problem they're basically telling you that this quantity right here is 5 and they want you to find this. So don't worry about B, we'll do it again for B too. We can add on to this problem, it's not a big deal. So we have one third, and now I'm saying this is five molar per second. And that has to equal 
one fourth of the change in C over the change in time. That's what we're looking for. This guy here. This is the one we're looking for. So here I have like five over three is equal to one fourth. If you want to just think about that guy as x, if that's confusing, like there's too much, too many things going on there. Just that's what you're trying to find. This guy. So I'm going to multiply this both by both sides by four, and I end up with like twenty thirds which works out to be about 6.7 molar per second. And that is what this is equal to. That's the change in C over the change in time. And you can do this for, um, for B as well, if you wanted to. Um, now you just have, so for B, let's do B in, whoa, uh, one third of change in A over the change in time equals one half of change in B over the change in time. And so now I'm looking for that part. And notice how this is negative and this is negative. That's okay. I'm looking for negative dB dt. Uh, so this guy is five. So I have one third of five is equal to one half of that's what I'm looking for. Because it's a, don't worry, don't worry about that negative sign. That's just um, to make the whole rate positive. So I end up with like ten thirds, which is what like three point three molar per second, and that's equal to negative the change in b over the change in time. So they didn't ask us to do that one. That's just our bonus one. If you know one, you know them all. Um, let's try another one. So if you want to pause the video and try to work this one out. Um, the trick here, just a little bit in the wording, if the rate of decomposition of this, so they're saying that the rate of decomposition, the change in N2O5, so it's a reactant, right? So it's decomposing, that's why I put a negative in front of it, over the change in time, and they give you that. They're saying if that is 4.2 times 10 to the negative seven, find the other ones. So find the rate of appearance of NO2. So the first thing you want to do is set up that expression that you had before, which was um, one half of negative the change in N2O5 over the change in time. That's the only reactant you have, so everybody else over here is going to be positive. That's a product. Change in NO2, change in time. And up oh, one to one, so this just has a one, so it's just one over one. So that's just the change in O2 over the change in time. So that's what we're going to refer back to. So now, in this one, they want to know what this guy is. Right? So you're looking for this part, and they give you this, which is right there. So we have one half of 4.2 times 10 to the negative 7 is equal to one-fourth of what we're looking for. All right, so I'm going to just multiply both sides by 4 to clear that fraction. Multiply that by 4. So you could do this in your head if you wanted to. This just becomes 8.4 times 10 to the negative 7 molar per second. That's a negative 7. And that is equal to the change in NO2 over the change in time. Mm -hmm. And then in part B, they want to know about oxygen. So you're going to set this up again, where you have one half of the change in N2O5 over change in time. And that just equals um, the change in O2 over the change in time. So you didn't have any stoichiometric coefficients, right? There was a 1 in front of there. Let me go back up to this reactant. So 1 over 1 is just 1. Um, so you just have to plug in the 4.2 times 10 to the negative 7 that was given to you. And you're just cutting that in half. And so you get 2.1 times 10 to the negative 7 molar per second. So that is the rate of change of O2. There we go, that's your final answer there. And if you go back up to the um, to this equation, you can see that yeah, for every two 
moles of this, we make one mole of that. So the rate at which this is appearing is going to be half of how, how much this is disappearing, if you want to think about it that way. And this guy is going to appear twice as much as this one's disappearing. So these numbers make sense. You always want to go back and check and make sure that your numbers make sense.